What I wanted to show you is simply a, a clock that I've been working on. I know that sounds crazy, but one of the things that I've been trying to achieve with this space, which is our basically our producer's room, is to make it as functional as possible, but also try to give it some eye candy as well. I've been using just a standard analog clock on the wall because it has tick, 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 and I can count the seconds. But I wanted to take it one more, uh, like a, a step further, because quite often when we're producing video, especially live, we have to meet markers. So there's a countdown. Um, usually I have a walkie-talkie if I'm producing somebody in the other room, and I'll be communicating back and forth in order to let them know the countdown. So you've seen it on TV, I'm sure. So, you know, five seconds, three, mark, you know, so we're, we're punching in that way. But it's not always ideal to use just a standard clock. So I set out to build something a little bit different, and it's powered by today anyways, a Raspberry Pi 3B+. I am not at all satisfied with the performance of that, which you're about to see. Um, however, it's given me a development platform to play around with. Now I may have to install it on something that can handle better graphics. Well, why do you need graphics for a clock, Robbie? Because I want to. So this is what I'm working on. I based this on the Ares jQuery um, dashboard. So you may be familiar with that, but what I've done is I've actually created a functional clock out of this system. So, um, so I've taken that, it's basically a template, and then I've created a jQuery uh, clock, counter, countdown, um, a disk check that uses Ajax to PHP to be able to check my network to see if there's any hard drive failures or, or, or hard drives that are full uh, in our array. Um, and I'll show you also, it, all, it even shows when we're live on the air. So that's pretty cool. Right now it's not connected. So we've got Studio E up here. These are the only things that are not functional. These are just eye candy right now um, from the original theme. I've left them in just to make it so that there's some filled space there. No point in removing them and having, having it not look symmetrical. So, um, so with this, we can ignore those things. Here we have the actual functional clock, and I've got Greek for time there, according to Google Translate. <laughs> so we've got 946 is the time, and we've got a seconds counter here, 10, 11, 12. So you can see how janky the video is. That's because of the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus not being... Uh, it's the graphics processing, not being able to keep up with the with the visual effects that I've created. It runs stellar on my Linux desktop. Um, so that's the actual time. Nothing fancy there, except I wanted to separate out the seconds. Uh, rather than having them in line like you'd normally see, like 9 colon 46 colon 38, I wanted to move that 38 up here, and it's counting in real time using jQuery. So every second there's a timer that updates the time. Then, taking it one step further, quite often in production, we count backwards. So when we're looking at 10 o'clock the time, we're counting down to it. So we're calling 60 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 5, and then everything goes black, and boom, we're live. So that's how it works. So what we have is now, now we see that it's 9.47, we can really easily calculate that we've got 43 seconds left. But if we look down here, we actually have a countdown that says time will be 948 in 35, 34, 33. You can see that jQuery timer is a little bit off. That's also the Raspberry Pi. That's not, uh, that's not the system itself. It's that the Raspberry Pi unfortunately can't keep up with it. I was really thinking this was going to work on, on a single board computer. I tried it on an Asus um, Tinkerboard. And it was, uh, it was so unable to handle the graphics that it actually wouldn't even load them. Um, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus at least loads it, but not well enough. So I'm going to try a couple of different SBCs. Um, the reason I'm trying the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus right now is simply it has Wi-Fi, which makes it a little easier to set up because um, I don't have, I haven't unpacked my Ethernet cables yet. Over here, oh, and this is not functional either. This is just fake, um, part of the template. Oh, I should point out up here. So 
Um, as I'm recording this, as we mentioned, we're not actually broadcasting live today. This is all we've produced this behind, like after the fact. So um, this shows the video feed is off the air. But as soon as we go live, this will actually shift to say on air. So that also serves a double purpose. If we're here producing and, and broadcasting a live show, we'll notice that uh, presumably, I mean, if we look up, we'll see that we're off the air. Something's going on, even though we think we're on the air. Um, this will actually show that. Then this is also functional. So this shows disk usage. My disk usage is not actually that bad, although it is close. Um, what this is looking to do is it's going to connect to Samba shares on my server, and it does a disk check every 15 seconds to see um, how much disk usage there is, and this will move automatically. The only one right now that's currently connected, because I have not created those Samba connections, is the SD card. So you can see I'm using about what looks like about 10%, 8% of my SD card. So these will move in real time. The animation is so much better on a computer. So I've got this little box here that I'm thinking maybe I'll turn that into my clock. But part of the idea is I want to create a setup here that's very low power consumption, yet has some eye candy and is also functional. So this serves many purposes from the time to the countdown um, to the disk usage warnings and even showing us whether we're on air or off air. And it will even tell us if there's a problem with the API. If the API is not responding, this will go red and it will warn us of that. Right here you see an empty box and that's because I have not yet plugged a microphone into the Raspberry Pi. This is a spectrum anal analyzer. Um, so that um, will actually show the, the spectrum uh, uh, in real time of audio that's flowing through the Raspberry Pi. So I'm thinking maybe we'll pull that off of our mixing console so that we can actually see the audio levels on the, uh, on the dashboard. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's my new clock. It's much more than a clock. It's a functional dashboard and going to be growing over the next little while as I develop it. It's not really ready for mainstream use right yet. However, if you'd like to check it out, you'll see uh, a repository called Studio uh, on github.com slash cat5tv, my GitHub page, and the source code for this and everything is there and you can check it out. If you have a PR for me to make it even funkier, I'd love to see it. And I'm going to be working on figuring out which platform, which hardware platform is going to work the best. I don't really want to put it on a Pi 4. I figure it probably will run better there. Um, but that's a very expensive clock. Very expensive clock. So, so maybe though, because there's dual video output on a Raspberry Pi 4, I could offset that cost by running my NEM server on the fourth screen. So that gives me some thought. So maybe I'm going to tinker with that. What are your thoughts? What system should I run it on? What one do you think is going to perform best as far as the graphics go? The processor is doing just fine. It's able to do all this, but it's the graphical end of it that the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus just is terrible at. So uh, I'm curious what, what single board computer is going to be the best one for this use case. So check it out, github.com slash cat5tv slash studio. And the folder that you're looking for for this particular application is um, screens slash dashboard. And you'll also see screens slash the Orville, which is actually a screen from the set of the Orville provided by Tom Costantino. Um, so that repository is basically anything that we do that I do for the studio, like API connections and things like that. That's where I stick them. So if you want to check out how we do things, that's a pretty cool spot. GitHub.com slash cat5tv slash studio.